So, hello guys and welcome again to my channel. Actually, this particular video is taped for my Suriga Doctors College as students in Fundamentals of Accounting. But you are welcome to watch. Okay? Now, before uh, we start this lecture video, I would like to start with a review on what is accounting. And as I've told you in the past, um, accounting is has a framework that I have drawn on the board. I don't know if you can still remember, but I will put it here again for a review, for a quick review. So again, the accounting actually starts with business transactions. So this business transactions will follow a process of first is identification. What is this identification? Identification is the um, recognizing of a transaction as accountable. And those that are not identified as accountable, they will be ignored. That's as simple as that. So what are those things again that are considered as accountable transactions? So here, you are going to separate the business transactions into accountable and non-accountable. So, if you can still remember, I told you, those accountable business transactions are those that can affect the assets, the liabilities, and the capital of the company. And I have given you a simple definition of the assets. So again, these assets are the economic resources. So in Tagalog, kayamanan, um, and bisaya, kabtangan, of the entity. Economic resources controlled by the entity. I will not go by your entity as an accountant. I will not go to the technical definition of the assets based on the conceptual framework of accounting. I will go to, I will go to, I will uh, define the assets in simple terms so that you can relate. Okay, so again, these are kayamanan or economic resources controlled by the entity. But you have, even if it is already uh, very clear, so I'll give you an example to make it more clear. Or clearer, I don't care. Clearer, so the examples of those assets are the buildings of the company, or else the machinery of the company, or the supplies of the company, or the inventories of the company. Something like that. Especially the cash of the company. Those are the examples of economic resources controlled by the entity. But, don't get me wrong, it does not need to be owned by the entity in order to be considered as assets. They can still be considered assets of the entity as long as it controls the benefit of those assets. Okay? So, that's the assets, the simple definition of the assets. Of course, we have the liabilities. The liabilities, in simple terms, are just the obligations of the entity to third parties. Like, for example, the entity has a loan of 1 million pesos from Metro Bank. And Metro Bank is a third party of the entity. It's not an owner of the entity. And in no way there is a relationship between your company and Metro Bank. Of course, those are considered as liabilities of the entity. Again, these are obligations of the entity from third parties. That's it. For example, loans payable, notes payable, loans payable or bank loans payable or mortgage payable in which the mortgage payable is a loan in which you have a collateral like real properties. Uh, basically, real properties only. Okay? So, those are the liabilities. And of course, the capital, which is, I think I have discussed to you, the capital is first, I consider this for myself as the obligation 
of the business to its owners or investors. So, I have emphasized that the investors or the owners are like the parents of the entity. So, they are the ones who will put on capital on the company. That is what we call as investments or additional investments from investors. And as I have told you, this money that has been put by the owners as capital in the investor side, that is very risky on their part because they may not get any of their investment or additional investment in the company if the company fails. Okay? So they are not the same with the outside creditors like in these liabilities because these outside creditors will be able to get the principal and interest um, in maturity dates. And sometimes, these investors like this mortgage payable, these um, outside creditors, sometimes they have a collateral on your loan. So which is if you default, they're going to get that collateral. Okay, so the capital being infused by the investors in their part are very risky because they could not get that one if the business fails. Okay? Needless to say, this uh, obligation to business of the business to its owners sometimes will not be given to owners at the end of the day. And needless to say, we can say that the investors are the ones who will take on all the risks. But if the business also succeeds, succeed, if the business also succeed, yeah, succeeds, then, all of the benefits will be enjoyed also by them. What do I mean? So, the obligation of the business to the owners will become bigger if ever the owners or the investors will invest. It could be an initial investment or an additional investment. Okay? Now, if the business does well, that means there will be a net income. Because the revenues of the company are much greater than the expenses. So th then there is a net income. That would be credited to them. Okay? So again, the net income is computed with revenues or those uh, inflow. Inflow, for example, income, which were not yet deducted by any expenses. Okay? So sa Bisaya, it's not yet, not yet in law. Alright? So, those are the revenues. The revenues will be credited to them, which is a benefit. If there are a lot of customers, there will be a lot of revenues. But when we talk about expenses, they are also going to burn those expenses. The risk of these expenses, the sacrifice, these are the expenses, it will be deducted in their capital balance or the obligation of the business. Of course, if there is a net loss, which is the expenses are greater than the revenues, of course, the capital account, which belongs to the owners or investors, will also be deducted. So that is why, again, I will repeat, the investors burn the risks and the benefits of the business. Okay? And again, the capital is actually an account that uh, gives the balance of the obligation of the business to its owners or investors. Okay? Now, of course, since this is an obligation of the business, sometimes if the owners will get some assets or something from the business, of course, our, as a business, if we are the business, it will be deducted by withdrawals from the owner. Of course, like for example, the capital now is 1 million. That means that's our obligation to the owners or investors, right? So if that would be the case, and if the owners think that 
this is already good. This is already big. I started with 100,000. Now it's 1 million because the company have a net income for consecutive years. So the owner decided I will withdraw 300,000, for example. So 1 million minus 300,000 as the withdrawals, it will become 700. The point is, let me tell you again, capital is the obligation of the business to its investors or owners okay and this is affected by of course first the investment or additional investment from the owners so this will go big if the if this is the transaction and of course if there is a net income it will also go big because if there is a net income the performance of the business is good it will be attributable to its owners and of course it will be deducted with a net loss it is because uh, again the risk of the business performance also falls within the owners or the investors and of course if the owners or the investors will get something from the business these are considered as withdrawals and it will be deducted from our obligation as the entity. And let me repeat, our point of view here, if we're going to be a bookkeeper or an, or an accountant, is of the entity itself. Okay? So that is the overview of the asset liabilities plus capital. Okay? Identification, accountable if it affects the assets, liabilities, and capital. So again, I have told you in the past that there are non-accountable transactions. So what are the specific uh, examples of these non-accountable transactions? Non-accountable transactions, again, it, if, if we're going to define, those are uh, transactions that does not affect this, right? And does not affect this, and sometimes they cannot be measured, or most of the times they cannot be measured. So I have given you examples like the hiring of employees, that's a business transaction, and most of the times the human resources are considered as assets of the company. However, they are not measurable, and if they are not measurable, this could not affect these assets, liabilities, and capital, therefore non-accountable. And the second one is that when you shake hands with your client because you have already um, agreed as to the services that you are going to render to him or to her or to it, or you are going to give him services out, oh, services, um, goods. You're going to sell them goods at a specific price and you have agreed on it. That is still not accountable if there is just a shaking of hand or meeting of minds only. Okay, the point is there are non accountable transactions. And after you have identified the transactions that could be recorded, as I've told you, you have to measure it. Right? Measure. Now, when you measure transactions, in the accounting or bookkeeping, we have measurement basis. But um, again, as I have uh, emphasized, you have to measure it in the Philippine peso if you are in the Philippines and the entity is in the Philippines, okay? But that is not the only one that you should remember. There are a lot of measurement bases. So first, we have historical cost or acquisition cost. These are uh, used interchangeably. So historical cost are those costs that you have paid in order to acquire the asset in the past. Of course, when you acquire land 10 years ago, it will be cheaper, right? Like if it is 1 million, then that is the historical cost. Of course, today, after 10 years, that land will appreciate because uh, land is one of the examples of the, uh, those assets that will appreciate its value over time, right? But we do not care. There are items in the... A is equal to L plus C that are measured at historical cost or acquisition cost. And there are a lot more like fair value measurement, whereby fair value or market value 
whereby some items of the assets, for example, are recognized uh, in the current fair market value. So if there are items that you have as an entity, you have to compare it with similar items in the market. And then what is the value of that in the market? That's the market value or fair value. Or else, the value in which the buyer is willing to buy, if you are going to sell it, and you are also willing to sell as the seller. So the buyer is willing to buy, the seller is willing to sell. That's fair market value. And there are a lot of values that we have to study here. Like for example, net realizable value and etc. But the point is, the next step after you identify the transactions, you have to measure it. Because you cannot go to the next um, phase, to the next step, if ever you're not going to measure it. So after measuring it, you have to record. So before we go to recording, let me tell you, those are journal entries. And we're going to go to that in the next sessions that we are going to have. So the point is, you have identified, you have measured, you have to record. I will not uh, give any more details about making journal entries first, okay? So that you will not be uh, confused or think that this is really complicated, okay? So recording, you just have to record. You, you, you imagine like you are just recording just like in a diary, okay? After that, you have to classify your records. Classifying. So I want you to visualize. I don't know how to explain this, but I want you to visualize that there is a cash outflow. So that is what do we call as expenditure. So if there is a cash outflow, that is an expenditure. But you have to classify that expenditure. Sometimes those expenditures are for assets that can be used for a lot of years. So those are considered as capital expenditures. And if those are capital expenditures, you have to group them and you have to put them on the asset side. Okay? Because you are um, paying for uh, resources that can be used for a lot of years and you can extract benefits from it from a lot of years. Okay? There are also expenses or expenditures or cash outflows that are already used. The benefits are already exhausted. Like for example, paying for the water bill that you have used in the past month or paying electricity bill for the electricity that you have also already used also or else paying for food in which afterwards, after five minutes, it will become useless and there will be no benefits from it in the next periods. Those are what do we call as revenue expenditures. And you have to group them also, those revenue expenditures, because you have to put it here as expenses. So that's classification, although they have a common, um, common uh, characteristic, which is a cash outflow, right? So, the cash outflow also that you have, uh, that you have, uh, the cash outflow that you have, the, mm, the cash outflow also, there are also a lot of reasons for cash outflow, right? You have to group them also. And there are also cash inflows, right? So, cash inflows are cash from customers, for example. You have to group them also. So cash inflows minus the cash outflows that you have, you have to record that one as asset also as cash. That is the cash inflows minus the cash outflows. Of course, it will become the cash balance. Okay? So that's the process of classifying. So those are examples on how you will classify. And you will master that in the next sessions. Okay? And after you have uh, classified, everything has been grouped. Of course, you have to summarize those classified transactions. So when summarizing, there are a lot of steps here in the bookkeeping. But I will be direct to the point. In the summarizing section, the, ask, the last or the end output of this one are the financial statements. 
So basically, after all the steps of summarizing, you will arrive with financial statements. Okay? So in the financial statements, you will have to see the list of the assets, the list of the liabilities, the list of capital. Of course, you will see also the list of expenses, the list of revenues, especially if the company has a lot of revenue strings. And of course, the explanation on why the cash ending balance is like this, which is the statement of cash flows. So um, those are the financial statements. Okay? Now, those financial statements are not yet interpreted because the next step of making the financial statements is the interpretation, which is from the list of the assets with its values, the list of the liabilities with its values, the list of the, the total of the capital uh, by adding investment, by adding net income, by deducting net loss, by deducting withdrawals, and by uh, listing the revenues and its balances and the expenses and its values. From that, you have to extract information. Okay? Information about the condition of the entity. Is it dying? Is it going to live for a couple of years? Or for a foreseeable future? Is it already big? Or is its performance good? Something like that. So you have to extract information from the financial statements. And that is what we call as interpretation. Okay? So after interpretation, it will result to an information that will now be communicated to the users of information. The users of information are again government, GCLIPS, we have employees, we have um, customers or clients, we have lenders, we have investors, we have public, we have suppliers. Okay? However, the primary um, users of financial information, information are actually investors and the lenders and the suppliers because they are directly affected by the performance and the liquidity of the company. Of course, the investors wanted to know the performance of the entity, the size of the entity. Is it liquid? Meaning liquid again is... Uh, the, is the company capable of uh, satisfying its short-term obligations, something like that. So overall, the investors are the ones who really need financial information. Now, the lenders and the suppliers also need financial information, but mostly on the liquidity of the company because they wanted to know if ever uh, the company will be able to pay them. Okay? So that is the review on the accounting all right so those information are given to the users of financial information so that these particular people will be able to make informed judgments and not like they are just guessing okay so what are we gonna do now is we're going to focus on the identification so, we are going to identify the transactions as accountable or non-accountable and we are going to look at the effects of those accountable transactions in this equation, assets equals liabilities plus capital. Which is why I call this episode as the identification of accountable transactions and the effects of those transactions. And transaction analysis. Actually, transaction analysis is much better because if you have the business transaction, you have to classify it as accountable or non-accountable. And after that, you have to analyze if that transaction will affect assets, liabilities, or capital. Will increase or decrease the assets, liabilities, or capital. And of course, we have to remember always that any effect, if there is on the assets, liabilities, or capital, the equation will still remain equal. Assets equals liabilities plus capital still. Okay? 
So, for that, I'm going to list a lot of transactions later. And we're going to take a look at what will happen to the A is equal to L plus C. Okay? So, I'll, I'll be back in a bit. Okay? Okay?